Oh, I wasn't quite ready for that one to start. Hello, hello. 9.4. Here we go. We learned about the Pythagorean theorem yesterday, which gave us that nice drawing. Yeah, didn't work with the Pythagorean theorem. Was not a right triangle. Uh, also gave us this guy and so on and so forth. Let me grab a different paper here and we'll get started. All right. Using the Pythagorean theorem. This little section right here is kind of interesting, so check this out. Let's say that you live on a lake. Your house is right here. The boat marina is over here. And your friend's house is over here. Um, let's say you want to figure out how far it is from your house to the marina. Like swimming. Let's say you wanted maybe to swim there. Or, I don't know, paddleboard there. Or how far it is from your house to your friend's house. You can indirectly measure this. Okay, think about the words direct and indirect. A direct measurement of something is actually getting a tape measure, going out there and measuring from point to point. But you can't really do that from your house to the marina. Can you? You can't do that across the water from your house to your friend's house. So you can measure it indirectly. You can figure it out. You know that it takes you 0.4 miles down the road and then 0.6 miles down this road to get to the marina. So you could use the Pythagorean theorem to do a squared plus b squared and then find the square root of that to give you c, which would be the distance from your house to the marina. That's called an indirect measurement. Now this is saying here, because the bicycle and boat paths form a... Okay, so you bicycled one way, okay. Boat paths form a right triangle. You can do this using the Pythagorean theorem. You could use the same method to figure out what x is. All right, you would know how to do that. Um, but let's look at something else here. Using the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Triangle. <clears throat> to find the area and the perimeter of a triangle using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, if I told you, hey, what's the area of this triangle? You should think to yourself, huh, let's see. Area of a triangle is base times the height, and then you divide it by 2. Okay, so I'm just going to do the base times the height. But guys, 17 is not the height. H right here is the height. So you couldn't figure out the area of this triangle unless you knew what H was. So let's do that once more. You should know how to do this, but I'll help you through it. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Say that to yourself in your head right now. You should know this formula, Pythagorean theorem. These are the legs, that's the hypotenuse. 15 squared plus H is the other leg. We don't know what it is, but we've got to stick it in there anyway. 17 is the hypotenuse. It's always opposite the right angle. So 17 squared. Well, 15 squared, I'm going to do on my calculator right here. 15 squared is 225. Okay. Plus h squared equals, and then 17 squared is 289. Now I'm going to subtract 225 from both sides. So minus 225. H squared then is 64. How do I get rid of that squared? Do the square root. Got to do it to both sides. What's the square root of 64? You know that in your head. It's 8. All right, so H right here is 8. Now could you find the area of this triangle? Yeah. You would do 15 times 8. Boom. Divided by 2. 60. See that down there? So that's the area, 60 what? 60 centimeters squared. Okay, that's not 60 squared, that's just units squared. So square centimeters, like little square centimeters. Okay, there's the area. Now to find the perimeter, we also had to know H. The perimeter, look, some of you don't quite understand this yet. That's okay, but it's time to learn, okay? Perimeter just means the outside distance, the distance it takes to walk around the outside. So if something happens on a store in a city block downtown and the police secure the perimeter, that means they walk all the way around the block 
and the perimeter of this area, they have secured. Nothing goes in or out. Okay, perimeter, the outside distance. So, to find the perimeter, you just add up those distances. Easy as that. 15 plus 17 plus, what did we say? 8. What is H? That's 40. Perimeter is just a one-dimensional distance, okay, or two-dimensional, I should say. Um, and so it's just 40 centimeters, not 40 centimeters squared. Now I'm thinking about those dimensions. That centimeter squared is actually two-dimensional, uh, so is 40 centimeters, but we don't, we don't talk about that right now. Okay, so last thing here. I mentioned this yesterday. It's going to be a short video. Um, last thing, a Pythagorean triple. A Pythagorean triple means you can plug it into the Pythagorean theorem and it works. Like 3, 4, and 5. That works. 9 plus 16 equals 25. 5 squared is 25. I believe 8, 9, and 10 are 8 squared plus 9 squared. You see this? Equals 145. Oh no. Those aren't, that's not a Pythagorean triple because square root of 145 is definitely not 10. Hmm. Well, there's other ones. But what I didn't tell you yesterday is that a Pythagorean triple has to be positive integers. 3, 4, and 5 are all integers. You can't do, like I just did, 8, 9, and let's see, 8 squared plus 9 squared equals 145 and the square root of 145 is that you cannot say hey 8 9 and 12.04159458 are a Pythagorean triple no all three have to be integers okay whole numbers no decimals allowed so could you identify a Pythagorean triple they've told you here hey this looks like a right triangle we're not so sure but do you think these numbers form a Pythagorean triple? Because if they do, I know that this is a right triangle. And so you just put your Pythagorean theorem. You put the legs in right here, A and B. And they do this out. Turns out 1369 on the left side, 1369 on the right side. So are they a Pythagorean triple? Okay, that works out. It is a right triangle, but it doesn't mean it's a Pythagorean triple unless these are integers and they are all integers whole numbers okay three positive integers can't be negatives so I believe that's all you need to know for today you're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem to figure out some interesting problems like what's the length of this shelf support Ooh, or let's look at this one this says challenge. I think I'm going to try and assign this one to you. And so I'm helping you right now on it. Find the area of the shaded region. You're given that ABC is similar to ADE. This little white triangle is similar to the big triangle. Um, and we talked about that last chapter. I'll have to refresh your mind maybe on that. AB is 10 feet. AC is 6 feet. DE is 16 feet. Don't you just love it when that heater turns off? All right, DE is 16 feet. We're trying to find the area of this shaded region. Think about it, think about this concept. The shaded region is the whole triangle, the big one, minus the area of the little triangle, right? If I could figure out the whole area and the area of the little white one and subtract the little white area from the big area, we would know what this blue area is. So I need to know the area of the white one, so I need to figure out CB, okay, because it's going to be base times height. So, um, let's see here, 6 squared plus, I'm just going to call that B for base, B squared equals 10 squared. 36 plus b squared equals 100. 100 minus 36 gives you 64. b equals 8. See how quick I did that? All right. You can do it too.
This one is 8. Let's find the area of the white. So I'm going to put A sub white. That means area of the white one equals um, 8 times 6, 8 times 6, divided by 2, 24. Okay, we got the area of the white triangle. Now we've got to find the area of the whole big triangle. We know the base is 16. We know that this part of this side is 6, but we don't know what that one is. But we do know this other interesting little tidbit, and that is that ABC is similar to ADE. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, this was a challenge. Here's how it works. What's this length for CB? It's 8, right? We figured out that that's 8. If this white triangle is similar to the big triangle, then 8 over 16, the ratio of 8, the base of this one, to 16, the base of this one, is going to equal the ratio of the left side of the white to AE, the full left side of the big one. Now that's from a previous chapter, but not, a, not beyond you, okay? You can remember this. Base, ratio of base over base with these similar triangles, 8 over 16, equals left side over left side, the whole left side. Now, could you solve that proportion? Yeah, you guys remember how to do that. Uh, cross multiply, 16 times 6, and this is a great problem. Divided by 8, oops, that was times, divided by 8 gives you 12. AE, this whole distance here, is 12. Okay, now let's figure out the area of the whole big triangle. 12 times 16, 12 times 16, divided by 2, that was base times height, divided by 2 is 96. So, area, I'm just call it the blue triangle, area of the blue triangle was 96. So let's just subtract 24 from 96. Could do that in our heads. That would be 76, 72, right? So area of the shaded region equals 72. What would our units be? Feet squared or square feet? Wow, that was a good problem. I would be super impressed if, uh, if you could do a problem just, just like that with different numbers. Maybe I'll give you one in class. Remind me, and uh, maybe I'll give you one for extra credit. How's that sound? All right, cool. That is how you can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out area and perimeter and to see whether or not you have a Pythagorean triple on your hands or not. Okay, we'll see you later.